both white and black charcoal on tinted paper is so fun. It's, um, it just looks amazing. Um, but there's definitely some right and wrong ways to do it. So the first thing that we need to do before we get started is find out what value our paper is. Because as always, we're working on that, you know, like nine step value scale where we're thinking about, okay, one is pure white, nine is pure black, and now we've got our midtones. But this is so different because our paper is a midtone. So if I was to think about our paper on a nine step value scale, this specific sheet of paper, I would say it's about a level, well, probably kind of like this guy. It's like a level four or five. Um, if I had lighter paper, then maybe it would be like a level three. So we have to figure out the value of the paper before we get started. So what I'm going to have you guys do is just write at the top of this sheet of paper, or you could do it on a... You could cut off a little strip of it if that's easier for you. Maybe I would do that. But anyway, I'm going to do it right at the top of the sheet of paper. So right at the top of the sheet of paper, I'm going to draw myself my little rectangle. See how terrible that is? It's just a line. I'll label my values. One, two, three, four, five's right in the middle. Seven, eight, nine. Um, and as always... Level nine is going to be pure black. So I'm just going to mark my pure black and I'm going to mark my pure white. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, of course, with pieces of scratch paper under my hand, I'm going to figure out how to achieve all those midtones. Now, I want to show you guys that um, you probably noticed this earlier. This black charcoal pencil is so, so dark that it's going to feel a little overpowering. So um, we can go ahead and lay that value down. Ooh, the sound of charcoal like this just like hurts my teeth. So uh, maybe I'll turn the volume down in this video. Um, I like to wear headphones when I draw with charcoal because I don't like the sound of it. But I want you to notice that um, this is my, my darker charcoal pencil. And then if I switch over to this guy, um, it's a way more expensive pencil, so just don't lose them, please. Um, you'll notice that I start to kind of get it turns a little bit gray. I hope you can see that difference in the video, but it's gonna appear a lot more like the vine charcoal. So I'm gonna use that as we get down into our midtones. Um, I'm gonna use a variety of different blending tools right now so that we can just kind of see the difference with all of them. Um, but I'm gonna use my finger just to kind of pull from my level nine to eight. And uh, I'm going to go back in with that the darker charcoal pencil and just kind of push a little softer, lighten things up a bit. And then when I get to my level 6 and 7, that's when I'm going to pull in my lighter charcoal pencil. You're going to see that it just does a nice job of making things not quite so powerful and dirty. Um, especially when I start blending it right here. I'm actually going to use a different finger because um, this one's already got charcoal, charcoal all over it. I have had um, students say that they like to keep a wet towel, like one of those cloth towels, in their lap while they do charcoal drawing because then they just kind of clean their hands on it as they draw. But notice how I was able to get light really, really easy with that uh, lighter pencil. And so now I'm... I'm going all the way from my level nine to eight to seven to six to five, and I'm kind of hitting my paper color, right? Um, another thing that's super important to think about with this is that you can actually blend or achieve value with the Dirty Tortillion. Um, so this ha already has charcoal on it. So you could make like a pile of charcoal on your scratch paper and then blend it in there. But you always wanna test it out before because this is a little dark. You don't want to go too crazy with it. And as always, your tortillion is going to leave streaks if you're not careful with the way that you use it. So make sure that you um, just use it very, very, very subtly. So the white's so easy. There's really not any explanation. If you feel comfortable going from white, level one white, to a level two, to then paper color, 
with uh, no instruction, you feel free to turn this video off right now because it is a piece of cake. Again, don't forget to switch your fingers that you're blending with though because you really never want your white and black colors to touch. Some people do that when they're um, using black and white charcoal on tinted paper. I personally feel like it's cheating and it's like getting your getting things muddy and gross looking. So I like to keep everything separate. I like the paper to show. I think that's the beauty of working on tinted paper is letting the paper show, not creating a muddy gray with my white and black mixed together. But that's just my own personal philosophy. If you're able to achieve excellent results by mixing your colors, by all means, go for it. I just have not seen as good of results um, with that. I do want to point out, I even like to kind of keep like separate tortillions for white and black charcoal, but I'm just going to keep one side of my tortillion white and one black. And so you never, again, you don't want to mix your black and white together. So you um, want to clean it before you work into those white areas. But you can see that the tortillion does a really nice job of blending things out. And bam! I've got my paper color as my mid-tones. It's a really nice, um, subtle change in value. Easy peasy. So I'm actually breaking one of my own rules right now. I'm using a, a drawing as my reference photo instead of an actual photograph um, of the real object, which I'm doing that because I forgot to bring it home and I'm at home working on these videos. Um, I know, I'm super cool. Doing art on the weekends. Um... Anyway, so uh, you can see that I have this nice diagonal line. What that is, is that's the line of the bottle. Um, so uh, this bottle, the, the way that it's angled is it's kind of foreshortened going back into space. So I'm going to draw just a guideline for the angle, and then I'm going to draw myself um, the opening of the bottle using those elliptical shapes, which, you know, they're not perfect circles, they're not perfect ovals, they're literally called ellipses. And I kind of like to overlap them as I go. And also, you'll notice I'm sketching with my white charcoal pencil because I don't want to leave pencil marks later on. And the white is just really easy to erase where the, the black isn't. But um, you, you could do this with a regular pencil. It's just um, not quite as easy to cover up later on. And I'm just kind of lightly sketching my way back to find the shape of this bottle. And I hope that you guys are referencing the photograph that I gave you instead of my drawing. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, you never want to use a uh, another drawing as your reference photo. Number one, if you're copying somebody else's drawing, that's plagiarism. And number two, you're only as good as that other person's mistakes which I am certain that I made mistakes when I drew this first bottle. So now I'm going to have secondary mistakes from, from this one. So yeah, check out the photo that I gave you instead of my drawing. Just use my video drawing as kind of a guide to help you through this process. Um, I am going to recapture those ellipses around the bottle as I see those stripes. There's going to be many moments where I'm, I feel like I'm torturing myself because I don't have that photo in front of me. I just want to confess. Turns out I couldn't do it without the actual photograph. So here I am at school working on this. Um, so I've got the bottle all sketched out with the white. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser to lighten everything so that it doesn't become an issue later on and it doesn't um, like turn into some muddy grays. Because remember I want to separate my whites and my blacks completely. So now I've got this very, very light. It's visible and I can get started. Um, I am going to start by using this 
the lighter version of the charcoal pencil and I'm going to sketch in my darker values with that. So as I look at my photo, um, I'm going to play around with like the darkest areas. And of course I'm going to have a piece of scratch paper on hand so that I don't um, blender smear, especially since I'm starting out with my dark stuff. And it's really going to be important that your pencil is super sharp. So I would recommend using one of these sharpeners to um, sharpen your pencil. As you can see, I'm stopping the video and um, working and then I come back um, just so you guys don't have to sit here and listen to me breathe while I work. Uh, but right now, you can see I've just penciled in the darkest areas. And I'm not gonna do the very bottom section of the bottle because um, I feel like once I do the first half, you guys will get it and you'll be able to comfortably and confidently move on to the rest. So I'm probably gonna stop about here with what I do with you guys and let you do the rest all by your awesome self. So now that I've got those darker areas in, and again, I'm using the lighter version of this pencil, not the darker version of the charcoal pencil. Um, I'm gonna take my tortillion and I'm just gonna start blending things. And I'm, I want you guys to play with every single charcoal supply we have, even Q-tips. So if you haven't tried blending with a Q-tip, try that. You're really gonna want a piece of sandpaper this time around so that you can clean your tortillion between the black and the white. And I even have a small tortillion that I'm gonna use in some of those harder to reach areas, which I don't have a ton of, but if you really need it, come let me know and I will find you one. But uh, I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna dive in and I'm starting to blend in these, I'll just kind of start from the left and work my way to the right. And you can see that with this pencil that I use, the lighter charcoal pencil, when I start to blend, it does tone things down quite a bit. So it might've been at a level eight or nine, meaning like pretty much black. And now it's suddenly like a level seven, which is quite a bit lighter. So I am gonna go back in later with my darker charcoal pencil and reestablish those blacks, but right now I'm kind of just trying to develop some mid-tones, the darker mid-tones anyway. And as always, I'm really cautious about outlines. So even if my photograph kind of has these lines that look like outlines here, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna try to just blend them out a bit. And I'm going to use the dirty tortillion to actually create some new lines of my own. So to be very specific about what I'm doing, see this line right here that's kind of a mid middle gray, like a level five. I, I see that line and I'm using the dirty tortillion to create that value. This can be done with a Q-tip or a finger. Um, if you don't have any like uh, charcoal on your tortillion already. What works great is to make a pile of tortillion. Sorry, I need to readjust. There we go. Make a pile of charcoal, like I'm just stealing right here. And you can use that directly onto your drawing, but you do want to test it on your scratch paper to make sure that it's not too dark. So always test before you uh, apply what, ooh, look what I did. See, I made the mistake I told you guys not to do. I didn't test and it was too dark. So there you go. Making mistakes in action. I'll fix that later. I'm gonna pause and I'm just gonna go through and continue just using my tortillion to blend things and then I'll meet you in a few minutes with the next step. So I actually went through and I erased my white lines a little bit more because I was starting to feel like you could see them underneath um, some of my shading. So I would make those lines as light as possible while still being able to see them. And most of the shading I'm doing right now, you guys, is 100% with my tortillion. So I've got a little pile of um, the dark graphite. I'm kind of rubbing some of it off onto the scratch paper and then I just use it as needed in 
um, those darker gray areas. So we're really kind of, if I'm looking at the value scale I did before, my gradient scale, I'm looking at the levels five and six. For those um, middle gray areas, like right here, the bottle, um, where it's kind of see-through, that's gonna be my paper color. So notice I'm not doing any, I'm not putting anything there at all. And this should, not only is charcoal a fast medium to work with, um, this should end up being what looks like a really kind of high quality drawing for not very much money. Um, charcoal is one of the least expensive mediums that we can work with. Uh, the only thing actually expensive about it is the paper. So you'll notice that with these charcoal papers, they have a little bit of texture. That's what's called a tooth, and that's where the charcoal really adheres to the paper. Um, but when you're finished with every charcoal drawing, you technically do want to spray it with something called a fixative. The only problem with fixatives, it fixatives kind of like a hairspray, so it keeps the charcoal in place. The only problem is um, they are toxic, so you can't spray them inside. So you have to like go outside, spray it, and then come back in. So I have just gone through and used my tortillion in all of uh, those areas. Now I think, you know, it's hard to say. I could go through and re-establish my black, black, dark, dark areas, but I think I might wait and do that last because it's the messiest of all the mediums. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my white pencil and add my highlights. Of course, I sharpened my pencil so that I can get really precise in these areas. And with the highlights, it couldn't be any easier. Um, I'm starting with my level one white, so that's the pure white looking right here on my value scale. Um, I'll start with that and then I'll kind of add the others. Um, this is where you're gonna wanna clean your tortillion. A piece of sandpaper works great for that. They're over in the drawer. Um, so you'll just clean your tortillion so that you don't have any of the gray charcoal or black charcoal on there at all. And then you'll just use that to blend your highlights. You can keep them pure white without blending, but you might need to kind of use a little bit of the tortillion here and there. I just went through and I penciled in all the white areas. I'm now going to take my clean tortillion to kind of blend them out. I even took the creative liberty to add a few more highlights because I just think that they look so interesting. But I always want to make sure I'm still keeping some paper showing completely. And I'm thinking about um, making sure I have uh, pure white in some areas. I will go in and add my pure black and then that range of grays. I also want to remind you guys that your negative space in drawing is just as important as your positive space. You don't want to have a bottle that's just floating on a counter, right? And this is a particularly interesting cast shadow because it's actually um, a highlight instead of a shadow. So because this is a large area, I'm just going to use my finger to blend it, which wasn't very smart because my finger had some black charcoal on it, but that's okay. And as I get close to the bottle, I'll go in and blend with my tortillion. But I really like this cast, this highlight, kind of outer glow look, because the edge of my bottle was totally lost because it's like the same color as the paper. So by now having this little glow around it, it's making it stand off of the paper and appear as though it's its own subject matter. So don't forget your negative space. And once you're finished with that, we're gonna go back in with the darkest of our charcoal pencils. That's this guy. Add the darkest black touches to wherever you think they need to be. And once you've made sure that your shading is smooth blended, you've eliminated outlines, it's got your hopefully nine levels of value, 
You're finished. Pretty fast, huh? You thought we were finished. I lied. So I think that the black edition is just too powerful, too strong. It almost, it's like I'm missing some something right here. I've, I've gone from a level nine to like a level six and a half. So I would personally go back in and kind of just blend some of those out so that it's a smoother transition. I also forgot to tell you guys, if you don't want to add the logo, don't. If you want to, go for it or change the logo if you want. I just figured it wasn't necessary to learning the medium. So I didn't have you guys do it. So I think now I'm done.